Hi, I'm Eleanor Silverstein, and today I'd like to talk about something that's called gastroparesis. Another way of calling it is delayed emptying of the stomach, and the food stays in there a little bit too long. It doesn't just happen in human beings, it can happen in dogs also. It's, it's a mammalian situation. And um, it's come up in our Feldenkrais community talking about it and asking about it. And actually, this is something that kind of gets me a little bit excited because I've worked with many people over the years who have a diagnosis, full-on diagnosis of gastroparesis. And in this delayed emptying, there's constant nausea and can be vomiting and not going to the bathroom properly and not feeling well you really need to be able to digest the food in the actual stomach. And there is a hydrochloric acid that is produced in there. And there's also the parietal cells, the lining of the stomach produces digestive enzymes that breaks down the food too. And the valve at the bottom of the stomach opens, lets some of the digested food come out and then closes. And then it opens and it plops out some of the digestive food, and then closes. And it's not just about the musculature of the stomach, but it is also about the valves opening and closing. What are some of the things that can cause these problems are actually viruses. It can happen to some people who were actually, if they're boxers, they can get clobbered in the stomach and uh, trauma can happen to that. Some of the viruses we know are the noroviruses or the Epstein-Barr viruses. And, but I would like to talk about the possibility of what happens when it's the vagus nerve. And you just never hear about that or rarely hear about that. And that is something we can really help with. Along with viruses, uh, you can find a good doctor. They can help you and give antiviral. If they find out what the virus is, they can give antiviral treatments, a homeopath can make homeopathic remedies so you can work with your homeopath, your naturopath, and your doctor to run the proper test to find out if it is a virus. Also, it can be other uh, infections, but those medically can be found. Now, when it can't be found, and it's actually the vagus nerve, and that can get an, a virus to it too, but when it's the vagus nerve, it can be associated with anxiety, stress, uh, shiver me timbers, just not feeling good that happens before that. Now, here is the esophagus. It goes down midline and then it meets the stomach, but the stomach is not right down in the middle. The stomach is up to the left. So this is my left side. This is my right side. It's usually pulled up a little bit. If it's pulled up too high, then it can push along the diaphragm and leave that sphincter open and cause acid reflux. And I have courses out there to teach people what they can do to help bring the stomach down and all these other things that we can do to help ourselves with acid reflux. If the stomach is flaccid and it's not getting the nerve conduction, then the motility of the stomach isn't moving and pumping and then that can delay the digestive food, the digested foods or the pre-digested foods to drop out through the pyloric valve down at the bottom, the liquid kind of thing. So the way we can tell is we can go down and here, I can feel the outlining of my stomach right there. So that's my stomach. Now, let's say you can't quite feel it and you have extra fat there, or maybe your stomach is hidden in a way, or you just have never felt for it. It's something that you can just explore. But I think of people who are allergic to eggs, they get a sort of paralysis of the stomach and they get nausea and they can vomit, they don't feel well. It stops the strength of the muscle functioning. So there's a lot of things, that's just another one, I have felt that in people that I've accidentally served egg to that were not egg compatible. And it's quite fascinating to feel that and then work it a little bit to get it to empty and then they can feel better. And I promise I won't serve you eggs again. 
but let's say this person has the stomach down here and it's vagal nerve related. We can do all kinds of things that will help us improve our vagus tone in Feldenkrais awareness through movement, functional integration, and Tellington T-touch. And in the T-touch, we can go and do little circles around the stomach and give a lift up to the stomach. If you feel that the stomach is dropping down and sagging midline, because all we wanna do is remind the musculature to be able to lift up. We want to talk to the nervous system of the gut and that everybody can do, anybody can do. So you see, I can just go little circles and then lift up. So if 12 o'clock were above, six o'clock were below, I'm gonna start at six. I'm gonna go little circles <sighs> around, starting at six, going around, and always ending with an up. So you can see. And I'm touching about as light, well, depends how light your tummy can handle it. So I'm touching about as light as the weight of an apricot in my hand. And I end with a little bit of a lift. So that's the Tellington T-touch kind of circle touch. And it's the Feldenkrais way of going with the nervous system, with the musculature and physically giving it that lift up. Don't be pushy. Don't be too assertive. Be very gentle because the enteric nervous system, the nervous system of the gut is so sensitive that it can send the information of the touch that you're doing directly up the spinal cord to the brain and tell your brain, look how good you can feel. Oh, that it can increase your heart rate variability, that you can feel calmer, you can feel great because what happens in your belly affects what happens up in your brain. You can touch different organs working this way. And I have different courses on that, but right now, just focus it around the stomach. Do you see how I'm giving a lift up and I'm being careful, don't extend a pinky. You want your whole nervous system to be calm and inviting inviting to be able to move your organ and touch your organ and talk to the motility of your organ. This can help gastroparesis. I've done this with so many people where I've done this hands-on with them and then taught them what to do to go home with. And it helped them a lot. If it's a side effect of a medication, we can still help it. Um, but those are things you can work with with your doctor. So. I hope that this helps inform you how simple we can work with our organs, how simple we can work to welcome in the vagus nerve to turn back online, to calm our brain down, to be able to get blood flow to the front of the brain again. And that can help us in all ways, shapes and forms. So share this because a lot of people need it, especially if they're, you know, eating foods that are not so great. So feed your gut, feed your brain, use your hands, give yourself the love. Have a great day.